What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. This time we're going to be reacting to Manchester City who this weekend won the FA Cup with an emphatic joint record largest win ever in the FA Cup final, a 6-0 win over Watford at Wembley. So I'm going to be reacting to what people have been saying. So as normal, we always use Twitter. Got it locked up and loaded on my phone. So we're going to have a look at what people have been saying and tweeting. And uh, hopefully there'll be some good, there'll be some bitterness and there'll be some funny tweets out there. So first and foremost, Manchester City have tweeted that they've become the formidable, winning the Community Shield, also the Carabao Cup, winning the Premier League 2 and also the FA Cup. That's four trophies of Manchester City, that's three major trophies, so a domestic treble, hence it's called that, and also the Community Shield included in that, so the Formidables, that's what they're calling themselves, the Centurions last season, the Formidables this season, so in response to that tweet, I was just having a quick flick around and look down, and I noticed a tweet coming in from Golden Wolves, and he tweeted, thanks Manchester City, with a picture of the UEFA Europa League, now, a lot of clubs take the Europa League not very seriously, they don't want to be in it, Manchester City, if there was to finish fifth, wouldn't want to be in the Europa League. Manchester United, ill feelings towards the Europa League. To see it as a pointless, uh, well, pretty much poor man's Champions League. But for Wolves, who haven't been in Europe in so long, it's a fantastic opportunity for them. And they're delighted. Their season's going to start earlier. It's going to be in July. But their fans have a European adventure to look forward to. They've qualified now for the Europa League. Because of Manchester City winning the FA Cup, it's gone down to 7th place. And I'm ecstatic for Wolves. So well done to Golden Wolves there. Correctly pointing out they are in the Europa League. Something that has gone above a lot of people with Manchester City winning that trophy. So well done to them. Now, West Ham transfers added in. Might as well draft this for next season. Uh, in response, Manchester City, uh, a lot of people are fearing City are going to be dominating now domestically because Manchester City's got so much unlimited finance there that Manchester City can go out there and buy whoever they want and they've now established a team that is capable of hitting heights never been seen before in England and so they've tweeted that we might as well draft it for next season and to be honest I'd be ecstatic if we repeated the success of this season going into next season too. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. I mean, winning all the domestic trophies, it's a perfect season, basically. Great success. Now, Anders, or LFC Anders, obviously a Liverpool fan, he's put, and literally nobody's going to remember it in a week except your own fans. And um, a lot of people might bite and react to that tweet. However, I couldn't think of anything more perfect, if I'm honest. Who cares but Manchester City fans? Well, to me, that's all that matters, if I'm honest. One day, we'll have kids. They'll have kids. You'll be able to tell them about how Manchester City hit 100 points. Who else is going to care about it other than Manchester City fans? And so, yeah, pretty much, I, I do care. And that's pretty much how it is. It's Manchester City writing history. A lot of people say City have got no history, yet we're one of the oldest clubs in England. Uh, and we're a prestigious club that's making their own history now and what history it is it's absolutely wonderful and it's something that should be shared amongst all of the Manchester City fans and it literally is nobody else's business but Manchester City fans and so I'm happy for Man City fans to keep it amongst themselves and celebrate with each other rather than involving loads of other clubs and loads of other fans and to be honest the tweet's not completely accurate because a lot of West Ham Wolves particularly with the FA Cup and Everton fans enjoyed the Premier League too so they've all shared the success with Manchester City and let's face it I'd say probably eight or nine out of ten people wanted City to win the league over Liverpool and so uh, yeah they do remember it and I imagine if things are like um, what they are this season for next season then City will end up having the support of all other clubs too if it comes to a race between Man City and Liverpool because Liverpool uh, unfortunately for them uh, are not very well liked. Now I noticed this in the comments too quite an interesting one Shy Robin put, where's the Champions League trophy then? Then a Liverpool fan replied called Jammy Dodger Double Zero, was thinking that as well, can conquer a country but not Europe. And then um, Athena commented, your team can't conquer country, to which a Liverpool fan responded, and your team can't even conquer a continent. Now, this was unusual, and to me, in all the reaction videos that I've done, I'd say it best summarises Liverpool fans. They're going on about Man City can't win a European trophy, to which they've been responded to, saying that Liverpool aren't capable of conquering the country, you know. Uh, and it's all a bit odd, if I'm completely honest. Um, 
to me you have to walk before you run and to be able to walk before you run you need to conquer your own country you need to be able to sit on top and say you are the best team in England Liverpool or Tottenham if whoever wins the Champions League cannot say they are the best team in England and it's a strange situation to be in it's not the first time it won't be the last time that you see teams that have uh, well, not won their domestic league, but have won the Champions League and vice versa. Now, we all know, particularly in La Liga, Barcelona is one of the best teams in the world, and to me, they're the best team in La Liga. They finished first this season. Now, Real Madrid have won La Liga plenty of times too. They've won it quite recently too. They've won the Champions League low a lot more consistently over the last three or four seasons, obviously winning them all back-to-back -back too. Incredible achievement. And they were the best team in Europe, but they couldn't conquer La Liga uh, on the same basis as what they did the Champions League. And it was odd. But Real Madrid have done La Liga plenty of times. And the, where I'm going with this is that Man City might not have won the Champions League or conquered Europe, but they're well on their way to doing it. Whereas Liverpool uh, may well conquer Europe, can I say they're well on their way to winning the Premier League? Well, that's just it. Uh, Man City over the last... Well, when was the last time Liverpool actually finished over Manchester City? Um, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, they haven't finished over Manchester City in forever and they've not ever won a Premier League and nor's Tottenham. <laughs> so they've definitely not conquered their own domestic leagues, yet they could well be the one that conquered Europe. Now, it, just, it goes to show me that uh, these teams, it requires... A lot of luck in winning the Champions League and it marks, to me, how difficult the Premier League is. And to me, it's a wonderful achievement in being able to do back-to-back -back with how much quality there is in the Premier League. And uh, I'm not sure if people are going to agree with this or not, but to me, the Premier League is more difficult because you have to be more consistent than what you do in the Champions League. You can lose maybe two or three games in the Champions League and still win the Champions League. Hell, Liverpool, I think, lost, they lost four games in the Champions League this season, yet they've only lost once in the Premier League. And so... <laughs> It doesn't make sense because Liverpool's lost four times in the Champions League and could win the Champions League, yet Liverpool's lost just once in the Premier League and didn't win it. And Manchester City lost more games, and we've not lost that many in Europe this season. I think we lost two. <laughs> And so, it doesn't make sense. Uh, to me, though, Liverpool need to show more consistency in the Premier League. Um, it's, Liverpool need the Premier League. They need it. They need it more than the Champions League. It'd be great for them to win the Champions League. I've always called the Champions League a bonus. But um, to prove you are a quality team, you're the best team that's been around since sliced bread, basically, you need to conquer everything. Uh, and Manchester City, to me, are well on the way for the Champions League. And Liverpool, well... Uh, they're going to have to overthrow Man City and over 38 games, that is extremely difficult. That's more difficult than um, winning, uh, well, how many games look at in the Champions League? We've got eight, maybe, out of 12 or 13 games. Strange. Anyway, Rob Harris, he's a journalist. He's the man that drilled Pep Guardiola. Now, straight after Manchester City winning the FA Cup, he went into the post-match press conference, stood up, pissed off Pep, and he asked Pep, has he received payments for stuff from Manchester City other than for managing Manchester City from Sheikh Mansour? Has he received more money? Because in the leaks, it was said that Mancini had done this. This was following Man City's joint record winning 6-0 win over Watford. Rather than speaking about the FA Cup and Manchester City's success, he's chosen to talk about that topic instead, and it pissed off Pep. Rob Harris tweeted this, though, but all over, Man City 6, Watford 0 in record equaling FA Cup final victory margin. City complete sweep of English men's football trophies, the Premier League, League Cup, FA Cup and Community Shield. Now to me, if he leaves that tweet at that, that's perfectly fine, we won't be talking about it, we all move on. He adds on at the end of that, investigations persist into spending that assembled football's costliest squad, getting his little digging. Okay, so let's talk about Rob Harris here for a moment. This is a man that's working with the media, working clearly with his own agenda, and wants Manchester City to be guilty. He's one of the journalists that's pushing for Manchester City to be found guilty of breaches of financial fair play, something that uh, was sorted out in 2014, and he wants to be able to uh, use this against Manchester City five years later, because conveniently cases get dropped after five years, whether they've been, uh, when once they've been settled. And so he's choosing to bring it back up as they continue to pound at Manchester City. 
City released a statement against the New York Times and all the investigations going against them. And I can guarantee that Rob Harris probably won't be welcome at the Etihad anytime soon for a press conference with Pep Guardiola. And my problem here is Manchester City's achieved success, uh, which... It kind of has been seen before. Now, it was seen with Sir Alex Ferguson with Manchester United when they were dominating twice under Sir Alex Ferguson. It was seen under Chelsea domestically when they dominated too. Nothing to the likes of what City's done. No one's clean sweeped all the domestic trophies before, yet Manchester City have. And it's an outstanding achievement. Nowhere in there do I see... Uh, the work that's gone into that is just basically saying that Man City's won all this because of money, yet we've had money since 2008. It's took us 11 years to do this, and it's been done because of the hard work that's been put in by all of the players and Pep Guardiola and his methods and philosophy. It works in the Premier League. Man City are hitting records that have never been seen before. We've had great squads in the past, over the past 11 years. Nothing's compared to what we're at at this level right now, and it is frightening how good this team could be. Just the Champions League's missing from it, completely dominating. And let's face it, quadruple's impossible, yet Manchester City very nearly made it possible. VAR obviously putting an end to that one in the Champions League, but we're still... We're in the right track. We're heading all over the place. And to me, I've just put it down to bitterness. They don't want to see Man City on top. They want to see it, um, well, basically, a uh, more level playing field if you get where I'm coming from with that but my problem with all this that I've got is that all these teams in the top six of the Premier League spend vast amounts of money and over the last two seasons or so which people choose to ignore the clubs that have spent more than what Manchester City have and so what Pep's achieving with his team they said he spent loads of money yet Pep wanted to revolutionise the team who's done it and Man City now don't really need to invest as much money or anywhere near as much money as what in my opinion rival teams need to do so for them to catch Man City up, they have to invest the money. And what pisses me off is, will Rob Harris and all these other journalists be tweeting these clubs when they do spend that money? You mark my words, they will spend that money. Man United and Liverpool will be spending money just as much as what Manchester City will. Tottenham need to spend money. Chelsea will be spending money, should they be allowed to, if their transfer ban uh, is uh, delayed and they're able to spend this summer. These clubs will spend a lot of money. Will they get criticised? No, it'll just be poked at Manchester City. And if it isn't this, they'll just be going on about our owners and because they're from the UAE and all of the human rights that's going on into there. What that's got to do with Pep Guardiola, the team and what they've achieved, it's... Ugh. It's just completely beyond me, and so it led to me looking for some positivity. Take me to Raheem Sterling, he's put incredible with two, two threes in there, fantastic from Raheem Sterling. He's put such a special way to end the season, today was just fantastic, a top performance from the whole team. Triple for the triple, for the treble, champions ole 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 at Man City with three blue hearts. Well done to Raheem Still, an outstanding season, and I'm so happy. All of the criticisms from journalists like Rob Harris criticising Raheem Sterling, saying he's not, he's a bad role model and all that stuff. And I love what Raheem Sterling's done. And I think Man City can take a leaf out of how Raheem Sterling's responded to everything. He's shown he's a winner, that he cares, he's a good man. Absolutely wonderful, fully deserved from Raheem Sterling. It's an absolute pleasure having him in the Manchester City team. Now, Scott Patterson, he's another, I think he's another... Uh, is he a journalist or is he working with something with Manchester United? Anyway, he put, Company leaves Man City, having won as many Premier League titles as Mikel Silvestre and Anderson, and almost as many as John O'Shea, but not even an appearance in the European Cup final. As we've been telling him for years, he'll never win the treble or the treble. Uh what, what an odd, what an odd tweet to put out. <laughs> what, what? I, I don't see what basis that has to do with anything. That, Phil Foden's won two Premier League titles. Uh, that basically makes him a lot more successful than what Liverpool are. Do you know what I mean? Fabian Delta, back-to-back -back Premier League champion. Does that, on that basis, that makes Fabian Delph now one of the best players that's. Uh, in the Premier League era over the last couple of years based on that. It's, 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 there's no correlation. It doesn't make sense. Uh, I think that pretty much sums up Man United fans, if I'm honest. They're a little bit irrelevant, if I'm completely honest. Now, I found these two wonderful videos. I want you to sit back and enjoy this. The first video comes from the Manchester City star from All or Nothing documentary, Brandon the Kitman. Have a watch of this. <laughs>
absolutely superb. He, uh, I tried to find one of the other videos. I did see it the other day, actually, of him when they was on the plane. He was uh, in his underwear again, getting pushed along on the trolley. And he is having the time of his life. And I can't help but smile seeing that. It's absolutely wonderful. AFC Fylde, who won the FA Trophy just the other day. They're a non-league club, if you weren't aware. Um, there, I think it was a physio who tried to replicate it, that video too, with the inspired video from the changing rooms and winning at Wembley. <laughs> Wonderful. It's absolutely brilliant. And this last video, if you didn't know, Vincent Company is leaving Manchester City at the end of the season. We're going to lose Captain Fantastic. I, Sunday that was announced. I was absolutely devastated. Won the FA Cup on Saturday. I was absolutely delighted to extreme crushing disappointment by Sunday with the news Company was leaving. Uh, this video surfaced. I saw it. It's absolutely wonderful. Have a watch of this. What is now... Party. That was in retaliation because Troy Deeney, bit of a uh, backlog into this, made some comments just after the FA Cup semi-final. I've talked about this in previous videos when uh, I did the analysis, I think it was, when City won in the FA Cup. Or it might have been just after. But Troy Deeney made some comments. We've just hammered their Watford side. Obviously, the team hasn't forgotten what he said. Certainly, company hasn't. And... I love that. I think that's a fitting way for Vincent Company to leave, winning all the trophies that's available to him domestically, scoring a worldie against Leicester to help us on our way to winning the Premier League <laughs> and making a meme and uh, out of Troy G Deeney. Absolutely wonderful. Anyway, there we go. That's been the video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a big thumbs up. Sorry, it's a bit long, but there was a lot to say, really, wasn't there? Um, if you're interested, you can go check out my social media links. I will use Twitter on this. If you want to go follow me on Twitter, that's at JSGC171. My link is in the description below and popping up on screen. If you want to go and search for me, along with my Instagram, at JSidlow. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe if you're new around here. We're just over 100 subscribers away from my target of 3,000 subscribers, so any help towards that would be much appreciated. If you're enjoying the content, why not subscribe? We've got the latest news and transfer news coming up later on this week to look forward to, so make sure you stay tuned for that. We've got plenty of transfer videos. We're going daily as of next week, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned for that. And if you want to sponsor any of the videos, uh, obviously loads of transfer videos, I'm expecting there to be plenty of news and plenty of views because of it, then if you're interested, then do hit me up with my business email, which is jsgc171 at gmail.com, uh, and see if we can maybe sponsor a video or two. That would be absolutely wonderful and would help me out a lot. So I'll see you all again for the next video. So it's been JSGC. I hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your day. We're all formidable. Peace. Ciao for now.